had spent Hurricane Eva in the house, and that was not a problem. But as soon as Iniki hit, I knew it was a totally different animal. There was a big difference between a Category 1 and a Category 4 or 5. Hurricane categories are based on wind speed with the Saffir Simpson scale. It does not factor in flooding from rain, tornadoes, and a hurricane's deadliest threat, storm surge. That's water that gets pushed on shore by a hurricane. Storm surge can cause a sea level to rise 20 feet or more. And on top of that surge, there are breaking waves. Combine the two and you have a deadly and destructive combination that can reach far inland, especially if the storm surge coincides with a high tide. Mass destruction and devastation. That's what storm surge and flooding from a major Category 4 hurricane could cause on Oahu. KITV4's Cam Tran shows you what could happen in this worst case scenario. These images of blue water hitting the coast are just animations, but one day this could be reality. Uh, this is a color map uh, showing the extent of the flooding. Dr. Kwok Fai Chung, professor at the University of Hawaii Manoa, studied what could happen if a Category 4 hurricane made landfall on Oahu. During a hurricane landfall, uh, we might see up to 10 feet of water on the one way uh, when the waves directly uh, break on it. The state civil defense wanted to use a worst-case scenario to develop its hurricane emergency and response plan. For Hawaii, this would be a Category 4 storm hitting downtown Honolulu and Waikiki. It is an animation showing uh, what happened. In these computerized models, Dr. Chung shows the aftermath. In the event of a hurricane, uh, the sea level will increase by a few feet, maybe three or four feet. But uh, we are talking about a huge hurricane waves approaching the shore. Uh, the hurricane waves can be uh, 20, 30 meters high near the coastline. After the initial damaging storm surge comes flooding. Flooding that Dr. Chung says would be worse on Oahu than on Kauai when Hurricane Iniki hit the island 20 years ago. I think the damage would be more significant for Oahu uh, because uh, the south side of the island is flat and you, we would expect to see more inundation as compared to Iniki because uh, in, for Kauai, uh, the coastal area is steep, so the inundation is not that extensive. And just how far inland would the floodwaters go? Because the shoreline in Waikiki is so flat, this area would see most of the flooding. In fact, the floodwaters could reach as high as five feet. And according to Chung's research, the floodwaters could surpass the Alawai and reach as far inland as Mo'iliili. The inundation from a Cat 4 could extend well west of Waikiki. According to these images, Ala Moana Center could see 2 to 5 feet of water, and floodwaters could cover several blocks into downtown Honolulu and shut down the Honolulu International Airport. Most of the single wall buildings will be damaged by winds, uh, and the flooding uh, might uh, close down business and cause a lot of damage to pavement and uh, buildings in the coastal area. In fact, Chung's students even created this animation to show in real time how long it would take for water to overrun Oahu's south shore. Elapsed time, less than 20 minutes. According to state civil defense, this scenario would cause hundreds of thousands to evacuate and seek shelter as water destroys neighborhoods. This is why Dr. Chung's research is so crucial to the state's response plan. Uh, that amount of debris, that amount of damage as the basis for building our plan. A plan that hopefully we never have to use but have ready, just in case. Cam Tran, KITV4 News. And you should have a personal disaster plan for before, during, and especially after the storm, which can be the most difficult if damage is significant. Many on Kauai say they were on their own in the first few days after Hurricane Iniki, then went several weeks without water and electricity. Until you go through one, you don't really realize what you need and and how valuable it is to have some things because something simple like toilet paper, I mean, you know, if you don't have it and, and it, if, you, if you don't have water, you can't flush your toilet, so. And that's why it's important to stock up on vital supplies now. Here's what you need for your survival kit. The American Red Cross recommends a seven-day supply per person of non-perishable packaged or canned food, snack foods, cooking tools, paper goods, water, and toiletries, a manual can opener. You should also have a first aid kit, any type of prescriptions you may need, special items for babies and the elderly, a flashlight and spare batteries, and a battery-operated radio. 
Make sure you have cash and credit cards on hand and important documents sealed in a waterproof container. Other items you may want to add, a battery-operated TV to stay updated with KITV4 storm coverage. And make sure it's a digital TV. The old analog ones won't work with today's technology. Also, car chargers for cell phones and maybe some games and books to pass the time. Go to KITV.com for a hurricane survival kit checklist. Don't forget to bring along your survival kit if you and your family need to evacuate. Other items you may want to take, a sleeping bag and blankets, a complete change of clothing and personal hygiene supplies. Before you leave, if you have the time, turn off your electricity, gas and water at the main circuit valves. And take the time now to make an evacuation plan. That's because state civil defense says Hawaii is short on hurricane shelter space and is asking the public to use shelters as a last resort. There are 47 pet-friendly shelters in Hawaii that welcome both people and pets during disasters. Owners need to make sure they have a crate for their pet, food, water, medication, and a leash before going to the shelter. All of the state's shelters, including the pet-friendly ones, can be found in the hurricane section of our website, KITV.com. During a hurricane, strong wind could topple power lines and cause widespread outages. Hawaiian Electric says power may not come back on immediately after the storm is over. If there's damage, that may require crews to do an assessment to make sure power can be restored safely. If poles and lines are down, HECO has to make sure circuits are ready to be energized. HECO says the company's priorities during a power outage are to get electricity back as quickly and as safely as possible. During natural disasters, it's very likely that hospitals will fill up with injured patients. The Queens Medical Center is the state's only designated trauma center. The hospital says it is ready and able to react in a hurricane. The hospital is licensed for 533 beds, but can provide even more space during a disaster. Plus, the hospital has its own power plant that can sustain the facility's water supply and electricity for several weeks. Up next on our 2012 hurricane special, preparing your home, the simple items that could save your life. And insuring against hurricanes, what you need to know to make sure you're covered when disaster strikes.